try to get something out as quickly as possible. And even if you, if you don't focus on getting the right pricing right out of the book, right out of the, the release, that's fine. It's just what you want with an idea is you want to understand like, are people okay to pay for it? And are you solving a real problem? And it's very hard for people to just project themselves in just something that you say. So try to give them something tangible always, like whether it's a mock-up, whether it's an experience, uh, I would say it's just get it out as quickly as possible. Go This is Devin Miller here with another episode of The Inventive Journey. I'm your host, Devin Miller, the serial entrepreneur that's grown several startups in the seven and eight figure businesses, as well as the founder and CEO of Miller IP Law, where he helps startups and small businesses with their patents and trademark. If you ever need help with yours, just go to strategymeeting.com. And we're always here to help. Now, today we've got another great guest on the podcast, uh, Michael Tricot. And uh, Michael is um, from France um, and had always wanted to start a uh, do a startup or start his own uh, company or business. Um, after college, went to, or came to the U.S., went to work on a few uh, different projects with some different companies. Um, didn't get a visa, so had to return to the uh, to France um, and then started up a data business in France uh, with or started at a, a startup with a data data business in France. I'm um, doing some financial products and financial data, uh, did another company, didn't like it, then returned to the U.S., worked for another startup like that, um, then did a few projects along the way. Um, from there, went to a couple other businesses, and then about a year and a half ago or so, decided to leave the job, um, took six months off to explore different businesses, formed a business with a co-founder, did a few pivots, for, uh, and then uh, worked to, to build it, and uh, that uh, brings a little bit to uh, where he's at today, and he'll give a little bit more insight. So, with that much as an introduction, welcome on the podcast, Michael. Thanks, Devin. What, what a, a very, very uh, short introduction. <laughs> That's right. So I gave kind of the, the quick 30 seconds uh, view to a much longer journey. So kind of with that, um, maybe take us back a bit in time to kind of the beginning of your journey when you were uh, in France and uh, or coming out of school and uh, starting to work in the U.S. and kind of how things got going for you there. Yeah, of course. So I've... I've came, I I graduated in 2007 and did an internship uh, at a company called Siemens in Princeton. So it was in the US. I stayed there for a year and a, a year and a half and I was working on medical imaging, like doing brain segmentation and everything. But really what I was also doing was all the data management of all the uh, like scan and like body images to feed into algorithm. So that was, I would say, my first initiation to data management uh, and like how you build some type of process around it. I was still an intern, but still that was my first experience. And then, yes, as you, as you mentioned, uh, I couldn't get my visa at the time uh, and I had to go back to France. And that's where I really went into the, the process, the how do you process data and how do you uh, well, compile data. Ask, before you get too deep into that, one question I have. So you were in the U. So you graduated from school, and, and remind me, what was your was your degree in? Uh, it was a computer science degree, a master. Uh, I did it in Paris. Cool. So you got, you get a computer science degree, you come to the U.S., do some internships, great experience. Don't renew the or they you know can't get the visa renewed. So out of you know not necessarily don't have a lot of choice. Um, so you go back to to France, and not necessarily a bad thing either. Um, but as you come back into France, coming kind of off of, hey, don't or can't get my visa renewed, what do I do now? How did you or how did you land that first job or kind of what was that experience of, okay, coming back to France after doing an internship in the US? What, how did you first uh, land that initial job? Yeah, so the way I landed it is I, I arrived in Paris and I was looking in finance. So what I did is I talked to uh, friends around me and actually had a, a friend from college who was working at that company at the time. Uh, started uh, three months before I asked him and say, oh yeah, this is great. The team is great. The product is really interesting. And if you like data, there are a lot of very interesting challenges. So having the ability to learn on 
a process and a project that already works and like trying to understand like how do you build a successful data business was uh, was something that at that point interested me and uh, I had a very good contact with the team when, you, when I interviewed over there and started working there. Um, and yeah, it was really about how do you manufacture a data business? Like how do you pull data from so many different sources how do you compile it? How do you establish? The, so basically building a data business is a manufacturing process where you have raw inputs, whether it's like analyst reports or like XML reports or like all kinds of PC or like websites reports or anything like that. And how do you bring it? And then you have your treadmill and you need to figure out what are each step this data needs to go through so that at the end you have a properly packaged good that you can sell to other companies. In that case, that was analysts and, and traders. But mm -hmm. that was my first exposure to, the, to it. And I, I stayed there for like two years. Uh, that was really very strong experience. It was both around like the manufacturing, but also the distribution of that data. And then, yeah, as you said, I moved to another company in finance and this one what, after just three. Just out of curiosity, what made you decide after the couple of years with the initial, you know, initial company started with? What made you decide to go to the other company in finance? Um, that was, I think, I wanted to be to to experiment also like what it is to consume that data. And this company was more on the operational side more than the data side. And it was really like how do traders and uh, and like people who are actually leveraging that data le using it? Like what kind of decision do they make out of it? And that was basically seeing both sides of the of the of the data story at that point. And I was there, and I mean, I, I stayed there for a year. But what I did during that year was yes, I built all the the product and, and everything. But I also went back to my initial goal which was i want to go work in the us and i want to be uh like part of the the startup life in the us because you know there are startups everywhere but in the end what you find in the in the in the bay area or in san francisco around startup is very it's, it's a very different uh, uh ecosystem and i wanted to be uh, at the heart of it so yeah i, I took the during that year, I started to interview in the US for, for companies. Then again, a friend of mine who was working at a startup manufacturing data in San Francisco uh, got me into the, the interview process. It uh, was a very, very, uh, very interesting moment at that time where I, I, I traveled when it was still possible to travel. Uh, I traveled over there over the weekend, did my interview two days, went back to France, uh, continue my, my job. And a few weeks later, they told me that uh, uh, I, was, uh, I was a pass and I, I was, sorry, I was good to go. And yeah, after that, I just started to, uh, to prepare my, my, uh, my coming. Uh, yeah, and that was, so this startup actually was really, like how I matured in what it is to build data product and data infrastructure, because we were dealing with massive scale of data, like petabytes of information. And we had to build and maintain and scale all the different connectors that are bringing data, the company is called LiveRamp, like to bring data into LiveRamp, process it, and then deliver it across all the marketing and ad tech ecosystem. So very, intense data company and i actually stayed there for for six years uh, i was a, a director of engineering and uh, and head of integration and i really that was really like a defining experience in how i'm thinking about one starting a, a company but all, because it was a, a very early stage startup at the time and also being able to see the signal that you can get on building a hyper growth startup. Now it's a it's a public company, so we went through that very very fast train of a, com a successful company, and yeah. And after that, went to another startup, continued to do data integration and pulling data everywhere until to a point where I said, like, okay, every single company is solving exactly the same problem every time. They are setting up the same type of infrastructure. And uh, it's just becoming harder and harder. You get so many data silos everywhere. Let's build 
an open source solution that can actually help company bootstrap that without to invest so much time in building all these different pipes to bring data uh, so that they can leverage it. And that's how uh, in Gener January 1st, 2020 at midnight, we started Airbyte. So now in, in, you, you say we started Airbyte. So that, you know, I think that when we chatted a bit before, one of the things that you started with is you had yourself and some other um, people that you'd worked with in, a, in the, the former company. So, you know, how did you, how did you get everybody on board? How, you know, was it your idea? Was it their idea? Was it a, a collaboration of multiple ideas? But kind of how did you decide, you know, let's get this company going, let's do it differently. And how did, how did that kind of all form and come together? Yeah, so I, I left the, 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 like it, the, the startup is called Red OS. I left in July, uh, on July 4th, like during, just before the, the, the Independence Day. And at that point, I took a month off. Uh, I went to, to France to visit family. And then when I came back, I really dove into, okay, I know what is a problem space that I want to address, which is I want I'm my expertise is in data and data is a very, very open uh, space. There are a ton of issues. None of them are actually fully resolved. And at that point, I had a very uh, good friend of mine. Uh, I've met him in 2012 in San Francisco, and we've been coaching each other along the, the, the year. Uh, him during what he was starting his startup and me was I was going through this hyper growth uh, experiment with a few side projects together and here what we started doing is experiment with we know a problem space what are good product that we can build to solve very specific issues and we came up with this uh, framework for evaluating ideas and sometimes we're just going a little bit adjacent to data sometimes it was not data at all but you know every single idea the first time you get it you feel like you're going to change the world with this idea. And after two days, you realize, okay, that was not a good idea. How did I ever consider this idea before? It's just, you go through this process of having ideas and try to discard them as quickly as possible. Because if you start a company, you want to be going on an idea that is going to get you to somewhere. You don't want to be putting years of your life in, a, in an idea that is going nowhere. And after you've thought about it and brainstorm with people, you start exposing this idea to the outside world, like talking to people. Uh, so here, first you start with former colleagues, you start with families, or you can actually go on LinkedIn, find people and try to get on a call with them to expose what you have in mind. And yeah, sometimes that works, sometimes that doesn't work, sometimes that gives you other ideas. So it's just like you go, you go into this mind of idea creation and you're constantly looking for like, all these little lights that tell you, oh, maybe you should work on that. Maybe you should work on that. And yeah, and that's what we did with John for like uh, three, four months. And then we uh, we figured out what we wanted to do. And in, uh, yeah, early January, we started uh, YC, uh, Y Combinator. And from there, that's how we, we, we started the adventure. No, I think that sounds like a, a fun and a, a great adventure to, to go on. So now that you've been going along that venture, you see you got your founders, you got yourself, you got the idea, you've gone through the accelerator and uh, now give people an idea of kind of where are you at in the launching process? If you launched it, you're cash flow positive, have clients revenue, you're still pre-beta and still working out the kinks, you're, you know, still having the idea phase, kind of where are things at for, uh, for you in the, in the company? Yeah. So after YC, we did actually something. We, we actually did the hard pivot, which is we're working on a product that ended up not working. And I think COVID at that point hit us hard for that product, but it also made us realize that we are building a good to have product instead of something that people actually need. And if you build a company, I think you want to be building something that people actually need and they will depend on. And we went back to the drawing board with everything we had learned from before. And end of July, we started to go heads on into Airbyte as people know it today. And what Airbyte is, it's really pulling data from any sources, whether it's a file, a database, an API, any place where you have data that is being siloed and bringing it and centralizing it into a data warehouse or a data lake. And what we did is, End of July, we decided, okay, let's build Airbyte. We have enough signal. We talked to 50 
different companies that were using paid solution that were not fulfilling 100% of their needs. And we just dove into this idea. And end of September, we released an MVP. And at that point, we started to see people using the MVP. It was very unstable, but we saw that suddenly the community is picking it up without us doing so much uh, like communication about it. It was just very discreet launch. Uh, we said, okay, we have something on GitHub. You can download it and you can play with it. And people starting to do it. And yeah, and after that, like the, the within a month, we, we had like over five, uh, between 300 and 500 deployment of uh, Opera Byte of people taking the MVP version, running it into their infrastructure and starting to use it. So it's open source. So yes, people are gonna use it for free. And at that point, what we did is we did a, a, a seed round with, uh, with Axel where we raised 5.2 uh, million. And during that time period between the closing of, of uh, yeah, like the usage continued to grow and the community continued to grow. I think today we have like 1500 people on the community for Airbyte. So our goal today is about commoditizing data integration. So we're looking at building the community so that we can crowdsource like the creation and the maintenance of these connectors because they are very, very hard to maintain. And that's what we're focusing on today. Revenue is obviously important, but our focus is the community today because you have an inherent network effect when you build a community where if you have a larger community, it kind of keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's what we're boots we've been bootstrapping over the past year. And yeah, today we have a few uh, paid pilots, but our real focus is really on the community today to make sure that we are building a product that people want and will start paying for at uh, when we release the cloud version. Awesome. Well, sounds like a lot of good progress. And you had, you answered all my questions before I even asked. I was going to ask where things are headed and kind of how things are at, and that already gone over. So that's perfect. Sounds like a, a fun trajectory <laughs> and a fun journey that you're you're on. So, um, kind of with that, now we'll, we'll switch gears a bit and jump to the two questions I always ask at the end of each podcast. So the first question I always ask is. Along your journey, what was the worst business decision you ever made and what did you learn from it? Yeah. And by the way, we also raised a 25, a 26 million round last week. We announced it. <laughs> but yeah, the what we I, I would say like the 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 error that we made was probably where we were at YC is to focus on to focus on something that was maybe a little bit too specific to an area where we were not experts in. So we were misinterpreting some signal, but in the end, I have no regret that we made that mistake because I don't think we would have even considered the idea of open source for solving data integration without having made that problem, having made that mistake. So just talking to people, you, and trying to sell an initial version of a product that doesn't work, you learn about additional issues that they have. And that just informed them that something you keep stirring in your brain on these are problems that exist. And the day we realized this product doesn't work, we, we just had like all these signal of people that were telling us, well, yeah, we keep building these connectors internally, keep doing it. And then that's what prompted this idea. So it was a mistake, but you know, we wouldn't be where we are today without these mistakes. So I consider them success, successful mistakes. That's right. I like, I like that successful mistake. That's a good, a good way to put it. So, and I think that it sounds like it was a good, a good learning experience and something definitely, uh, or something learned from. So now we're going to jump to the second question, which is, is if you're talking to someone that's just getting into a startup or a small business, what'd be the one piece of advice you'd give them? Yeah, I would, I would say try to get something out as quickly as possible. And even if you, if you don't focus on getting the right pricing right out of the right out of the, the release, that's fine. It's just what you want with an idea is you want to understand like, are people okay to pay for it? And are you solving a real problem? And it's very hard for people to just project themselves in just something that you say. So try to give them something tangible always, like whether it's a mock-up, whether it's an experience, uh, I would say it's just 
get it out as quickly as possible because just you at your desk in front of your screen or in your laboratory or wherever you're building your product, this is not enough. You're not building for yourself, you're building for others. So you need to get them involved into the manufacturing or the building process as quickly as possible. No, and I think that's great. And I think that there's a lot of wisdom in that because a lot of times, no matter you know how well you know your customer, maybe you are your customer, you know it and everything else, there's always going to be things that you haven't anticipated, you haven't been aware of, you didn't think of that, or those are features that you should have been incorporating. And, you know, you have to be careful. There's a balance of you don't want to get it out so quickly that it's, you know, not a non-functional product or it doesn't work or it's so non-representative that people are, aren't even going to give it a chance. But on the other hand, you wait for so long and it, you can also miss that valuable feedback and you're also going to build a product that nobody will, is willing to purchase. So I think that getting it out there and getting that feedback and understanding that is definitely worthwhile. Well, if people want to reach out to you, they want to be a customer, they want to be a client, they want to be an investor, they want to be an employee, they want to be your next best friend, any or all of the above, what's the best way to reach out, contact with you and find out more? Yeah, so of course you can go on airbyte.io. You can contact me, Michel, M-I-C-H-E-L at airbyte.io. Or you can also go on our Slack. We have a public Slack for the community, Slack. Uh, S-L-A-C-K dot airbyte dot I-O and you can join and you will, you will be welcomed by uh, someone from the team. Awesome. Well, I definitely encourage everybody to connect up and to reach out, find out more and, and support you guys as you continue to grow and you continue to, to dominate the market. So, well, as we wrap up, thank you again for coming on the podcast. It's been a fun. It's been a pleasure. Now, for all of you that are listeners, if you have your own journey to tell and uh, like to be a guest on the podcast, feel free to go to inventiveguest.com and apply to be on the show. Two more things as a listener. One, make sure to click subscribe in your podcast player so you know when all of our awesome episodes come out. And two, leave us a review so everybody else can find out about all of our awesome episodes. And last but not least, if you ever need help with patents, trademarks, or anything else, just go to strategymeeting.com. Grab some time with us to chat, and we're always happy to help. Thank you again, Michael, for coming on the podcast and uh, wish the next leg of your journey even better than the last. Thank you, Devin. Thank you so much.